I lay in bed and thought about how easy it was to hurt a person. It didn't have to be physical. All you had to do was take a good hard kick at something they cared about. Because there was only one thing worse than dying, and that was knowing you were going to die, and where, and how. And the most terrifying question of all may be just how much horror the human mind can stand and still maintain a wakeful, staring, unrelenting sanity. All I could think of when I got a look at the place from the outside was what fun it would be to stand out there and watch it burn down. Death doesn't exist. It never did. It never will. But we've drawn so many pictures of it, so many years trying to pin it down, comprehend it. We've got to thinking of it as an entity, strangely alive and greedy. All it is, however, is a stopped watch, a loss, an end, a darkness. Nothing. The monsters that rose from the dead, they are nothing compared to the ones we carry in our hearts. He was soon borne away by the waves and lost in darkness and distance. I still get nightmares. In fact, I get them so often I should be used to them by now. I'm not. No one ever really gets used to nightmares. The truth is that monsters are real and Ghosts are real too, they live inside us, and sometimes they win. The lips were as red as ever, but there was no sign of movement, no pulse, no breath, no beating of the heart. Consequently, if you believe God made Satan, you must realize that all Satan's power comes from God, and so that Satan is simply God's child, and that we are God's children also. There are no children of Satan, really. All human beings, as we meet them, are commingled out of good and evil, and Edward Hyde, alone, in the ranks of mankind was pure evil. I'm going to put death in all their food and watch them die. Wit stared into the face of death and death blinked first. You'd think that would make us feel brave and invincible. It didn't. We used to live in your house, George said. And now, guess what? Jerry added. Now we're dead in your house. Monsters come in all shapes and sizes. Some of them are things people are scared of. Some of them are things that look like things people used to be scared of a long time ago. Sometimes, monsters are things people should be scared of, but they aren't. Hungry toggle between two states. They're frozen in place most of the time, just standing there like they're never going to move again. Then, they smell prey, or hear it, or catch sight of it, and they break into that terrifying dead sprint. No warm-up, no warning. Warp factor 9. I saw something moving round the foot of the bed, which at first I could not accurately distinguish. 
but I soon saw that it was a sooty black animal that resembled a monstrous cat. It appeared to me about four or five feet long, for it measured fully the length of the hearth rug as it passed over it, and it continued towing and throwing with the lithe, sinister relentlessness of a beast in a cage. I could not cry out, although, as you may suppose, I was terrified. Its pace was growing faster, and the room rapidly darker and darker, and at length so dark that I could no longer see anything of it but its eyes. I felt it spring lightly on the bed. The two broad eyes approached my face, and suddenly I felt a stinging pain, as if two large needles darted an inch or two apart deep into my breast. I waked with a scream. God never talks, but the devil keeps advertising, Father. The devil does a lot of commercials. With a thin black wand, he was drawing designs on her body, dipping the wand's point in a cup of red held for him by a sun-brown man with a white moustache. The point moved back and forth across her stomach and down, tickling to the insides of her thighs. The naked people were chanting flat, unmusical, foreign-tongued syllables, and a flute or clarinet accompanied them. The favorite specter of Sleepy Hollow, the headless horseman, who had been heard several times of late patrolling the country, and, it was said, thedered his horse nightly among the graves in the churchyard. The life of the ebony clock went out with that of the last of the gay, and the flames of the tripods expired, and darkness and decay and the red death held illimitable domination over all. As he crossed the entry hall, he had the feeling that the house was swallowing him alive. She had a ghostly pallor and a dreadful expression. She wore clothes that were out of keeping with the styles of the present day. She had kept her distance from me and she had not spoken. Something emanating from her still, silent presence, in each case by a grave, had communicated itself to me so strongly that I had felt indescribable repulsion and fear and she had appeared and then vanished in a way that surely no real, living, fleshy human being could possibly manage to do.